1980 cardiac kids, but it also produced only 47 wins with 50 losses. The players were stunned today when they heard the news. I consider Sam a good friend and a good human being, and I'm sorry to see him go on that note. Um, that's about all I can say. You know, it, football is such a game of change. You hate to see a lot of change, and but that's the nature of the game. I don't know. I'm speechless about that. Uh, you know, I'm happy for uh, Coach Marty Schottenhammer. Um, I don't know. I still don't think it's too late to turn this thing around. We can win eight in a row. And, uh, you know, maybe the change is going to help Cleveland Browns. Uh, I feel bad for Sam. He's been a good man and a good friend. Sam was a man that I really respected. He had a great impact on my life uh, for us, you know, football, and helped me develop into the player that I am. I was surprised because, uh, probably because I liked Sam so much. And uh, he was one of the maybe the reason that I'm here today. As you might expect, the fans' reactions were different since they don't know Rotigliano the man and have varying degrees of knowledge of the sport. I think it's too late to change him now because they didn't, you know, started the season off, right? So why change him? That's the best move you can make for the Cleveland Browns. Uh, I like Sam very much, but I would guess it's time that it uh, happened. From my old baseball days when, thing, uh, days when things don't go right, you just change the uh, manager. I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't know if all the mistakes were Reticlianos anyway. A coach loses his job for many reasons, but I can't help feeling the Browns' offensive players, some of them, were major contributors to his dilemma. And these players are better than they've shown, and I don't mean... Browns, and what I perceive to be in the interest of the Cleveland Browns, at the same time, uh, I'll get back to Sam in a moment, I've uh, appointed Marty Schottenheimer as head coach of the Cleveland Browns, effective immediately. Hello, everybody. I'm Jim Mueller, and welcome to the show. Well, this week got off to a churning start with the big announcement you've just heard. Sam Rotigliano's reign as head coach of the Cleveland Browns has come to an end. It lasted seven and one half years, and there were plenty of big moments, both good and bad. However, this year's one and seven start, a bad coaching decision a couple of weeks ago, and several other factors prompted Art Modell to make the change to Marty Schottenheimer. It came as somewhat of a surprise because just two weeks ago, Modell had said he would not make a coaching change in midseason. I felt it was in the best interest of the organization. I didn't feel it at the time, two weeks ago. I feel it now. I think it suffice to say that I felt the timing was appropriate I think that uh, a new era begins with Marty. Uh, I don't know what uh, the one and loss columns will show at the end of the, this eight weeks. Art has said in the past that one of his weak points has been a reluctance to make changes when they were needed. Of all the changes he has made, perhaps the firing of San Matigliano, his friend as well as coach, was the most difficult. The decision was made late Sunday night in Modell's home after that 12 to 9 loss in Cincinnati earlier. I had a meeting with Sam last night at my home about 9.30, 9.45. And um, Marty came over about 11 o'clock. I had Jim Bailey and Ernie Acossi at my home. And uh, after meeting with Sam, we met uh, with Marty. And I offered him the job at that time. It was not an easy thing for, for me to do, believe me, uh, with this man particularly, especially. I'm approaching almost a quarter of a century in professional sports. It's a long time. And the longer I stayed in the game, the more difficult it was to find good people. And Sam Reticliano represents what I cons consider to be quality, integrity, and character. And there are very, very few of them in professional sports today. He gave me everything he, he had, and it was good. There is no question that Sam is one of the most respected and best-liked men in the NFL. Some said he may have been too caring with his players and really not tough enough, and that that trait may just have led to his downfall. The number one goal that I had coming to Cleveland 
course, for the Cleveland Browns to be successful. Today, I've become the number one fan of the Cleveland Browns. That doesn't change one bit. It's a, it's a great organization made up from the top to the bottom with a lot of great people. It's been a great experience for me. I was treated fairly. Uh, I only have one regret, that I wasn't able to completely get the job done. I crossed a lot of bridges. I enjoyed it. I think uh, you should have some long-range vision because as long as you have a strong organization made up of good people, there are only temporary setbacks. And uh, the only thing that I would like to say now publicly is that I wish that this community would have a true picture of Art Modell. I think one of the most unfair things that I have been associated with since I've been in Cleveland is the good things that he stands for and the things that he believes in in this community. And I think that's unfair. I think I was treated fairly and uh, I'm going to remain in this community because I think it's a great community to live. I experienced some high points. This is just another bend in the road as far as I'm concerned. I loved my association. I'm going to be Marty's biggest fan, and I hope the Cleveland Browns go ahead right now and win the next eight games. The only advice I can give to Marty is make sure you kick field goals. <laughs> and very frankly, to take the opportunity to uh, reflect, sort some things out in my own mind, look at some options, and then have the time to evaluate uh, in January uh, what would be the direct, best direction for me to go. Party and uh, start to read the newspapers. Do you want to coach? <laughs> <laughs> Sam, do you want to coach again? You... I'm a football coach. I've been a football coach all my life. And probably that's what I would like to do. But as I said, I want to take some time to reflect on that. Let's go back in time for a moment now. Waylon Boot takes a look at the Ritigliano years. Coach Sam was introduced to Cleveland during a news conference just before New Year's in 1977. I wanted somebody who was off offensive oriented, <coughs> geared to the offense, but with a, with a knowledge, more than a passing, but a thorough knowledge of defense. Sam has had both. Remember Sam's first game? He lost it to the Steelers in overtime. It was a trick play. Bradshaw to Rocky Blyer to Lynn Swan, back to Terry, who hit a wide open Benny Cunningham. 15 to nine was the final. But undaunted, Sam maintained his philosophy of fun with football. A mature understanding of fun. And that means a guy to go out there and just not be afraid of the fear of failure and do your job. And that was Sam's philosophy through good times and bad. Sam certainly did have a number of high spots in his career with the Browns, twice in 1979 and 80. He was voted AFC Coach of the Year. In 1980, he took the team to the playoffs with an 11-5 record, the final victory of the regular season coming in Cincinnati. Another cardiac finish, and the Browns win. They go into the playoffs, final score in Cincinnati. The Browns 27, the Bengals 24. For the second straight season, Sam Ritigliano was named Coach of the Year. But for the first time, the Browns had a new name to go with cardiac kids. They now could be called champions of the best division in football. I love every play. Huh? What a game. We got a game ball for everybody. Just a second. I got my best line of the year, man. Got my best line of the year. Bum Phillips knocked on the wrong floor. He knocked at the wrong door. Hey, man, look. You did it. You did it with a flair for the dramatics. And that's where we are. Hey, hold it up. Hold it up. Hold it up. It's, a, it's the best thing. Hey, look. It's the best thing that's ever happened to me. And the thing that's most important about it, we could all share it together. That's really what's most important. And I love all you guys. Hey, we're number one, right? There. In the 1982 season, shortened by the player strike, Sam again took his team to the playoffs. 
Certainly another accomplishment, and I know the one he's most proud of, was the development of the Inner Circle program aimed at helping players overcome alcohol and drug problems. He was selected by the NFL to help institute a similar program league-wide. In reality, the only reason Sam Ritigliano was fired was because the bottom line in pro football is winning, and his team wasn't this season. After all is said and done, Sam Ritigliano has left his stamp on the Browns organization, and it will remain even if he doesn't. His mark is one of class and dignity. He may not have won on the field often enough, but off the field, he was a big winner in many ways that other men can only dream of and envy. On behalf of everyone here on Browns 84, I'd want to thank Sam for all the good things and all the good times. Those are what we'll remember and what we'll miss. Godspeed, Sam. As for the Browns' new head coach, Marty Schottenheimer, the 41-year-old defensive coordinator, is in his fifth year with the Browns, his 11th year in coaching. Marty began his career as an assistant with Portland in the World Football League in 74. In 75, he joined the New York Giants staff as linebacker coach and later became defensive coordinator. Following his stint with the Giants, Marty spent two years with the Detroit Lions as linebacker coach before coming to the Browns. Schottenheimer is married, and he and his wife have two children. The contract is, runs through the balance of this year and through 1985 and 1986. I feel that uh, a new coach coming on in midstream, midterm as it is, requires a, a time uh, frame where he can put his own imprint on the organization. And uh, the 85 and 86 seasons is what the contract calls for, in addition to, of course, the balance of the present season of 1984. Well, obviously, it's a, a bittersweet moment, but uh, I'm very excited about the opportunity, Jim. It's, uh, as Sam stated uh, so er earlier, it's, uh, it's a great organization, and um, I'm, uh, I'm positive that I'm going to be good at what I do. I have uh, no question in my mind, and the thing that we've got to do now is address ourselves to this week, and uh, we're looking to start a streak. We want to win one in a row, and that's our objective right now. Dave Adolph, who I've worked with and Sam has worked with for many years, uh, I have a great regard for Dave, and uh, he is going to assume those responsibilities which I have, have uh, carried out, particularly in reference to the signal calling and those, those aspects of it. Um, I expect to, to uh, become involved in the offense, uh, initially the outset with uh, uh, some input and uh, to, uh, to keep abreast of those things that are going on on that side of the ball. And uh, by my very nature, I tend to get involved in most everything. Marty, does that mean you're going to rely a lot on Joe Scanella now? In this period that we're involved with right now, that I have somebody like Joe that I can rely on. Joe's a very capable coach and uh, has a tremendous amount of expertise and experience, and I am certainly going to rely on that. What I would hope is that we would continue the enthusiasm that we've had defensively, make some more plays defensively uh, in the area offense. I think we've moved the ball well the last three weeks. I mean, we've moved the ball up and down the field, but finish those things off. Put the ball in the end zone, and uh, because it's it's uplifting to the entire uh, to the entire team when you do that. And I I feel like. Uh, uh, that we that we can get that done, and I don't know that it'll be perceptible this coming Sunday, but that's that's our goal. Now you say finish those things off. Obviously, you've got some ideas how to do that. Well, you know, I, I think really what we've got to address ourselves to is the psychological aspect of the situation that we're in. If uh, we were being stuck down after down offensively, I think there'd be concern, but we're not. We're moving the ball well. Paul has thrown the ball uh, exceptionally well, uh, going for over 300 yards in each of the last um, uh, three ball games, and we have moved the ball up and down the field, and what we've got to do is make sure that we understand that uh, those last 20 yards, though they might be more difficult, they're more important. Marty, I know one thing. Anybody who's been around football will say this, uh, so it's no great uh, guru saying it, uh, but you've got to run the football. 
I believe you've got to run the football, uh, and uh, even if your average per rush is not real good, I think you have to do that to be able to take control of a game. And I think that you need to be able to do it to take pressure off a young quarterback, Jim. And um, that's one of, of our my personal objectives at this point in time. And um, I am not one who tries to stick a square peg in a round hole, but we need to be able to do that. We asked some of the players how they feel about the change of head coaches. Well, I tell you, I was very, very shocked to hear the news, especially uh, Sam being let go in the middle of the season with eight, with eight game deaths to play. I thought they, for sure he'd be around for the whole season. I thought he'd be around really the next four or five years. But, uh, you know, it, it came as a shock to us as it came to a shock, I'm sure, to everybody. So uh, it's a situation now that, uh, you know, we have to pick up where we left off and uh, we just had to keep going and uh, keep playing especially to the best of our ability. I think that Mario do a good job. I thought Sam was a great coach and uh, a great man but I just wish him well uh, in whatever he uh, encounters. Well it came as a shock to me. I woke up this morning and someone called and told me and I didn't believe him and uh, I came up here and it's been you know shown to me that it's true so it's just one of those things where you have to take it as a positive thing and hope it works well for the future. Uh, it's very hurting you know he was a nice coach Coach, you know, he made a lot of things to this team and to this city, and but we hate to see him go. Well, you know, I was very much surprised. Uh, I came here with Sam when he first came here. He drafted me uh, number one along with Clay, and you know, I was hopefully he would would be able to see through my career. Uh, it didn't work out that way. You know, Mr. Modell made a decision. I have a lot of respect for Mr. Modell. And now Marty's the head coach, and uh, he's my coach, and I'm going to be behind him 100%. If I had the team and general honor, I think that I would have kept him on for the year and then weighed things out at the end of the year, but that's not for me to say. Well, I am going to miss him yeah. because I think he's, uh, I think, despite what a lot of other people think, I think he's a good coach, he's a good motivator, but more importantly, he's a good friend, and uh, for that, I'm going to, to miss him. Um, I think Marty Schottenheimer is going to do a good job for us. I think he's a very fine coach. He has a, uh, a brilliant football mind, as evidenced by how our defense has responded. And I think uh, we're going to have good things that are, that are going to occur. Three of the Browns, Willis Adams, Matt Barr, and Steve Cox, had their best ever performances. Unfortunately, in a losing cause as the Browns went down to defeat at the hand of the Bengals. If it hadn't been performances, the first is that of Steve Cox, who booted his second, or rather his longest ever field goal, 60 yards, second longest in NFL he history. He is capable of hitting this. I've seen him hit it as far as 65 yards in practice. From 60 yards away. Is it enough? It's good! Oh my goodness! A 60-yard field goal by Steve Cox. I am not surprised, Bill, because I have seen him kick it that far in practice week after week after week. And that is the second longest field goal in the history of the National Football League, folks. Take another look at it. Sweet and true. The other fine performance was turned in by Willis Adams. His eight catches for 95 yards, the best for him in his NFL career. Adams, a 6'2", 200-pounder, played his college ball at Houston. He was a fifth-year man, or is a fifth-year man, who was the Browns' first-round draft choice in 1979. Adams was signed as a wide receiver, and it was hoped that he would be the burner the Browns needed. But due to several reasons, uh, injuries included, Willis failed to perform at wide receiver, and now he's playing mostly a tight end, and his best-ever game, of course, last Sunday. Despite the injuries in past years, Willis may just have come into his own now.